say it. Oh, this? Uh, uh, actually, it's knitting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I'm making a sweater. <gasps> Can you make me a sweater? I got $10. Ooh. Um, the price of yarn being sometimes over $200 a sweater. <laughs> and uh, then the price of my... <gasps> you should start an Etsy shop. Oh. Ooh. Um. <laughs> no. My old baby cash is crying. Uber rewards have all expired. My Starbucks stars have all burned out. Oh no. There's just one thing, and it's not disposable fashion. Ew. It really makes me scream and shout. Welcome, Fiber friends. It's Fiber. It's Fiber time. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Frank and Frog Fiber Podcast 2. This is the second episode, uh, and I'm so happy you're here. If you came back, thank you. My name is Janine. I'm coming to you from Toronto, Ontario, and I am a knitter and crocheter and fiber lover in every way. Um, I live here with my husband and my two small people, um, and I'm a teacher at a performing arts high school, and I teach drama and musical theater. Well, that's all about me. Um, if you like this podcast, if you like this video, then uh, you can do the things, do the YouTube things, like it, subscribe. When I started uh, filming today, I had 49 subscribers, and I was like, Let's go to 50. So I don't know if we can get there, but whoa, let's give it a try. <laughs> so uh, what is new? What is new today? Um, I've got this skein of fiber that I didn't show last time because I didn't buy any fiber. I didn't get any new fiber. I did get some new, uh, new stuff. I, I actually have some yarn coming my way. And I have a knitting bag to pick up, a project bag, uh, but I don't have those yet. So I have this. It is Hedgehog Fiber Poppy. That's the color. And you can see it's like the old Hedgehog Fiber label. But my question for you is, what should I make out of this? Because I asked some of my knitting friends uh, while we were on Zoom, and they said, don't use that to make socks but I kind of want to make socks out of it. Uh, what do you think? Do you think it needs to be a hat because it's kind of a um, very special colorway? Maybe I'll put something up on Instagram to do a little poll and you can tell me what you think about what to do with this beautiful skein of fiber. It was supposed to be part of a fade, um, but when I actually received this color, it didn't go um, in the fade like I wanted it to. I'm a little picky with my fades. P.S. If you ever want uh, help finding a fade, I love helping. So uh, if you ever have a color story that you already know you want to do, like you love peach, um, if you DM me uh, where you want to buy your yarn and the, the kind of yarn you want to use and maybe like one skein that's like your inspiration skein, I can help. I've helped quite a few of my friends with picking a fade. So if you want help with that, um, let me know. I'm wearing my Jessie Mae um, Ripple. I think it's the Ripple Bralette, but I've kind of like, um, I've uh, made it a little bit longer. You can see. Soft pants check. Everybody do the soft pants check. I hope that you're all wearing your soft pants. I mean, unless hard pants are your favorite, then wear those. You know, be comfortable. Be who you are. Okay. So next I got this. This is another new item for my life. So it's Embody by Jacqueline Sieslack. And this book is absolutely beautiful in every way. You can see that color story on the front. Well, that 
goes throughout the entire book. Um, I'll show you a couple other photos in here. The photos are absolutely stunning. So look at that color, the color story in these photos. Sorry, my fingers are covering it. When you flip through this book, it kind of, it's relaxing. You know, it gives a, it gives a real vibe. And um, here's another really beautiful picture. Uh, so the other thing about this book is that Jackie doesn't uh, give you one size fits all patterns in this book or one um, one pattern fits all. She gives so many options on what you can do to alter the pattern, to make it fit your body perfectly. And um, the introduction is really beautiful. And, you know, she explains like how she got to the place that she's at right now uh, with herself, with her body, with making her own clothes. And, you know, this is one of the most beautiful things in life is when you see my daughter opened this yesterday my daughter Evelyn and she started reading this foreword right and she was inspired by reading the beginning of this foreword and that's so powerful you know you start to see that a change is happening in our young people and hopefully that change is going to reverberate through um that whole generation and so when they are older things um Things will be different with the way that we perceive ourselves and the way that we perceive others. Uh, so that's a, that's a fantastic, beautiful book. And I can't wait to make uh, the two knitting patterns in here. And then I need to learn how to sew. <laughs> so one of the knitting patterns is the Darren cardigan and sweater that's uh, on the front. And again, uh, I think there are, I'm trying to count them, I think there are four different options to create this sweater in different ways. There could be five. Um, and then the sewing patterns, there are even more ways to adapt them. So that's Embody and it is a beautiful book. Next. <laughs> so um, I don't know if you've ever done a craft exchange with somebody, but I'm doing a craft exchange right now with my friend Ariane. And she is going to sew me a dress. I ordered the fabric and I sent it, or I dropped it off. Uh, we did a little porch drop off. And then I picked up her Batignol sweater. I don't know if that's how you say it. Is that, is that French? I, <laughs> I'm bad at things. So uh, this is the sweater. I'm gonna hold it, hold up the yoke first. This is the back. Is that not spectacular? And this is the front and you can see it's gonna be steaked. This is gonna be a cutting the sweater situation. So I'm working on this right now. Obviously it's color work. Um, and this is the part that I did right here. Um, Ariane already blocked the sweater. So there is a little bit of a difference from where she blocked it here, where the, the um, stitches bloomed a little bit and where I've been knitting here but not too much of a difference. And I know that this kind of yarn, which is quite wooly, which I just realized I have to ask her what yarn this is made of, but <laughs> this yarn will definitely bloom, which means like expand a little bit after you block it. Uh, so I did 12 rows last night. I'll show you the stitch marker where I um, started last night. And so I started to get these polka dots, these beautiful polka dots that uh, populate the entire sweater um, and they kind of go um, offset from each other down the sweater. So that is one of my now works in progress, which I think is super fun. Do you love color work? I love it so much. It is a ton of fun. I don't know, it excites me. You can't wait to get to the next row, right? Um, also on my needles is the Timberline. This monster, so this is uh, one side of the sleeves. There are seven cables um, on each sleeve. So there are the braided cables that are on either side of this main cable that looks almost like a tree branching up and out. And see this main cable becomes part of the braid there. Um, again, I don't know if I'm just easily excited, but this is fun. It's so much fun. Um, 
I'm not mad at these cables and I also cable without a cable needle. So uh, if anyone ever wants me to show them how I do that, um, just uh, drop me a line. You know you can find me on Instagram at frankenfrog. Uh, I can't believe that name wasn't taken. I thought everybody Frankensteins their knitting with like all different yarn and has to frog at least once a project. No, just me. <laughs> so yay, what is finished? Let's talk about what I finished. I finished, first of all, the love note. Ah. So I don't know if you are like this when you finish a sweater, but I feel like there should be a dang parade. There should be some pomp and circumstance. It's like, you just made a garment that you could wear, put on your body and walk out of your house. Um, so I'll show you it here. Here's my love note. And obviously it is partially Frankenstein, which means I didn't order enough of the mohair because I thought I only needed two because I used two for a love note that I made for my friend earlier this year. So you can see where it quietly transitions into a slightly different mohair color. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I don't mind. I find when I'm making something for myself, I actually care way less about how perfect it is and if it has a little bit of uh, Frankenstein character, I'm not mad at it. Um, so I don't, I don't know if, if this is what you do, but I'm gonna show you what I do when I finish a sweater. I'm gonna show you right here. Let's take a look. <laughs> did I finish? The other object that I finished, I, I can't show you because it has been commandeered by my child. I finished uh, a little crochet project um, for my daughter, Evelyn, on, what was it? Whenever May the 4th was. May the 4th be with you. Um, Basically, all the students were online in her class showing off their Star Wars paraphernalia and it came to Evelyn. Like the teacher called on each student and asked them if they have any Star Wars stuff to show. And Evelyn hung her head and said, I've got nothing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh no. So I got to work making her this baby Yoda. All right, and it's a free pattern. I am going to uh, put the name of the pattern in the video so you can see it, but I'm gonna show him with his clothes on, with his robe on and with his robe off. He's pretty funny with no clothes on. Um, and I just used leftover. I actually used um, this beautiful advent calendar that was created by Stitch Together Studio. Um, and I'll put that link too. Uh, when I made my friend the adventurous wrap. I think it's called the adventurous wrap. So I have these leftover greens, so I used them to make baby Yoda. My daughter instantly took baby Yoda and I couldn't have baby Yoda anymore. She took him upstairs to bed, put him to sleep on her pillow and hung up his robe in the closet. I think she likes it. So that was a huge success. And that kind of leads into uh, the interview that I got to do earlier this week. I interviewed Amelia, Amelia the owner of Yarns Untangled, um, a yarn store in Toronto. And it was a really great opportunity because I feel like we're at home ordering yarn, um, you know, whenever we need to make our stash grow a little bit. But, uh, and we never come face to face with the people that are providing us with all of our beautiful yarn and kind of keeping us going. So 
I uh, hope to interview a whole bunch of different yarn shop owners or maybe some dyers. So if you have anyone that you think I should reach out to, to feature, uh, please let me know in either in the comments or you can DM me on Instagram. I think that people who are creating beautiful crafting supplies are so instrumental in keeping us going during this time when we're all uh, stuck inside. Um, so my, in yes, this leads into the interview. Sorry, here's my point. Because she said some really interesting stuff in the interview about um, how crocheters are per perceived by knitters and how there's sometimes this hierarchy of knitting being better than crocheting and, you know, there being a comparison between the crafts, uh, which I never thought of before because I started as a crocheter and I was, I was like, crocheting is cool. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you'll see all of that and how much thought uh, Amelia puts into everything she does and how um, her, along with other, other people around her who work uh, in the store, have contributed to creating a really inclusive space. So I hope you enjoy this interview. So I am here with Amelia Lyon from Yarns Untangled, and it's so nice to meet you finally. Person yeah, it's nice emailing. to meet you too. Finally, kind of like meet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is how you meet right now. This it's is, true. This is all we got. <laughs> it's true. I have like quite a few new people in my life over the last year who I've never been in the same room with. Like people yes. who come, we do a Wednesday night stitch night and we have a handful of people who've joined us either because they moved to Toronto and we're looking for a group, but they moved after the pandemic or they've joined us from uh, like the East coast or another place. And I have never met them and I don't know if I ever will. It's, it's cool. It's like a strange silver lining. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, no, I have a whole group of friends that we meet every Wednesday as well. And I've mm -hmm. barely seen them in person. I think we got to see each other once during knit in public day. Cause there was an outdoor park thing, an outdoor That's thing, it. but nice. uh, yeah. So Yarns Untangled, an amazing store right down in the heart of Toronto in Kensington Market. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the story behind the store name Yarns Untangled? There's, um, here, hold on. I'm going to, how do I, can I, oh, here we go. You can, you can flip it. Look, horses. <laughs> there are horses. Do you see them? It's called yep. on horses going by mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay. That's just what's happening. That's the kind of really day professional. Really professional. <laughs> no, yeah. So I forget your question. <laughs> oh, about the store name Yarns Untangled. Like when yeah. I hear it, it feels very calming. Like someone's taking all my yarn barf that just came out and it's like <laughs> unraveling it for me. Yeah, um, the, name, the name process was funny. I like, it actually took us way, way longer than I had expected to come up with like a name that I really liked. Um, and it was always really important to me that there wasn't a pun. I love a pun, don't get me wrong. <laughs> do not get I love a pun and there's so much that can be done with puns and my brother is a writer and so he just was like bombing me with like all these hilarious silly like knit wits and all these puns and stuff and like don't get me wrong I do I love a pun but as a female business owner and as someone I I always all like people go like oh you knit that's so cute and I'm like I would like to be taken seriously so uh we <laughs> wanted we wanted the name to be a little bit uh less less cutesy a little bit more uh I don't know formal is the right way but I wanted to be taken seriously damn it so that's a part of why I had a no pun rule and I also didn't want to have the word knit in there either <laughs> because um I had worked in there. So there used to be a yarn store in Kensington market called lettuce knit. That was there for ages. Gorgeous shop. Um, started by a woman named Megan, who's now uh, a yarn dyer. I actually happen to have this handy. That's <laughs> not even planned. This is like, an oh. like so she, um, she used to run the yarn shop in Kensington market for years. She ran it for a long, long time. Um, and did a beautiful job and then she sold it. And I worked for the people she sold it to for a little while. And then they closed their shop and we opened up in the same location. Um, and where was I going with that? <laughs> she, so uh, let us knit, blah, blah, blah. Right. So I worked at let us knit for like three years and 
I witnessed and kind of like sort of co-experienced with other people like the discomfort that for example a crocheter would feel when entering a yarn store happened way more than you would think um that they really like they feel like maybe they don't belong there or like their craft isn't as uh valuable somehow as knitting and like this was this was brand new to me but since then I see it all the time you see it there's 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 a lot oh, of yeah. problems surrounding the like knit versus crochet and we don't have to get into the like class issues that that surrounds necessarily right away. But um, it was really important to me that as a result, the word knit wasn't in the title either. We wanted it to be about the yarn. Um, and we figured that, you know, people would understand that it's for knitting, but it's also for crochet and weaving and all that stuff. So that was uh, important to me and yarns untangled. I don't know. It was untangled yarns for a while and then my dad flipped it around and I decided I liked that better, but I can't remember how we ended up at it, but that was part of the thought process anyways, that like take, I wanted the word knit out of there and no puns. <laughs> but that just goes to show how much thought goes into the name of a shop and it mm -hmm. has to do with the vibe you want to throw out there too when people walk into the space as well. And speaking of your space and vibes, your store has a reputation for being an extremely queer positive space. Can you tell us how that got started? Um, I, you know, I, I, I can speak to it for sure. It was, um, when, when I originally started the business, I did have a business partner for a period. Um, she's moved on and she lives in the States now. And so, um, it's just me and my staff and it has been for a couple of years. Um, and so part of that definitely came from, um, something that she kind of brought to the table at the beginning way because she uh is queer and so that kind of um I'm not but I'm also the like aside from one other staff member I'm the only person who has ever worked at Yarns Untangled who isn't um and and it's not by choice it just kind of it just kind of happens whenever we interview people we always just hire the person we think is best for the job and everything but um what was always really important to us and and to me especially in this you know, I, I, I spoke about it a little bit at the, in the other answer when we were talking about how crocheters don't always feel welcome. It's, um, I, you know, I've been a knitter for so long and I've walked into just so many yarn shops and that vibe when you step in, like kind of informs your experience. And there have been lots of places where I've stepped in and felt comfortable and welcome. And there have been a, like more than I would care to admit times where I've walked into a room and I felt like I was interrupting or like maybe I I didn't belong or there was something you know and it's partially because I think we we when we run a yarn shop like it kind of turns in like so many kind of hobby businesses like this it turns into sort of your living room and so when somebody enters the space it's a lot like they're entering your home um and so it was always just really really important to me that whoever wanted to come here would feel welcome. Um, and, and it was, it was always really important to that. And the fact that, you know, my business partner was queer helped for us to kind of, um, have that be the forefront of our, of our headspace all the time. And also, uh, I have my Annabelle who works for me, um, has always been a big champion of our queer stitch nights and wanting to run those and stuff. And, and she kept bringing it up being like, we need to schedule another one of those. So that's part of it as well. It was just like, you know, the people who are around me are good people. Um, and I kind of pride myself on having uh, really, really been real lucky um, and having really great people around me all the time who help to kind of keep the space welcoming to everybody. So that's kind of, that's kind of, kind of where that comes from, if that makes the most sense. It's knitting and crocheting and crafting and stuff. It's a very solitary activity you use you know you don't need anybody else it's not a sport you don't need you know a, a team of nine to play baseball you just need you and a tool and some yarn and so you spend a lot of time doing it alone which for some people is all they want and that's great but it also means that you have this really really kind of intense personal relationship with the craft and it brings you joy and it bring, brings you peace and happiness and that kind of thing and when you go into a space where it's doing the opposite for you, that can be really hurtful. That can be more hurtful than if you're just like going to the store to get milk and like it is or isn't a bad experience, you know, whatever, but you just need the milk. But in, in this, it's like, I don't know, there's, it's a, it's a very sensitive relationship we have with our craft. Did that make some sense? I'm just kind of rambling, but I, yeah, I, think, I know uh, totally, totally. It's important. Yeah, I, it's important that we feel that that's something that is important to us, that we can go into a space and feel comfortable and, and welcome um, in that kind of extension of our craft. 
<laughs> that makes yeah. sense. So what is your dream fiber event that you've not yet attended or that you have attended and uh, you want to go to again? Can you tell us about, because we all want to live vicariously through these memories that we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Let's think about a better time. Um, so I can answer both sides of that. Um, ironically, I have never been to Toronto's like premier fiber event, which is usually happens at the end of April, which is the Knitters Frolic here. I've never been because I was always working at Let Us Knit. I was always working on the Saturday that it happened or on the, it's, yeah, it's on a Saturday. And last year in 2020, I had booked it off months in advance with my staff. I was like, I'm going, I I've never been, I've always wanted to go. Um, and sometimes I would, you know, I'd get people who were going to like make notes and find, you know, make connections and hand out our card and stuff, but it was just so silly. And so I was going to go. And of course, didn't get to go, didn't get to go this year. Cause it's not happening this year either, or at least not in its traditional away so maybe next year <laughs> who knows <laughs> so that in in a sort of silly way my local fiber festival is the one that I would really like to go to um I mean of course there's always Rhinebeck I'll probably go eventually to Rhinebeck um but I did go to Festival Twist in um or the Twist Fiber Festival at Gatineau um uh in 2019 I think it was my sister I'm from Ottawa originally and my sister and her boyfriend have um a little house like around the corner from where where Twist is held and so I went to that and that was wonderful it was a really really cool festival um and they did a lot of they do a lot of really hard work there to make it not just booths, which is great. Like you go and you see, you make connections and you see the people and you buy amazing yarn and, um, and stuff like that. But they also have some really cool classes and workshops. Um, and they really work really hard on the, um, kind of community element of it. And so I really admired that. I thought they did a really good job. They've got like inside and outside and they had my, uh, my brother also came down from Montreal with his family and they had, he has two little kids and they, we're able to have a really good time and none of them are knitters. Well, yeah, none of them are knitters. None of them are crocheters, nothing like that. And so they, they, uh, they were able to have a really good time. So twist is a great place to go. I really enjoyed that. All sure. right. We can all like, you know, pack our suitcases eventually and get excited by going somewhere. Yay. Um, <laughs> that sounds amazing. I want to ask you what is on your needles? Oh, well, I, dropped it on the floor earlier when I uh, got distracted and was uh, picking up yarn instead this I'm just gonna get it to a spot where I can hold it up here yeah this is a sleeve that I started a little while ago um this is the Northdale pullover by Gudrun Johnston um it's a, a three color color work pullover um and I'm doing it in um three colors from Georgian Bay Fiber Company, which is one of the Canadian dyers we carry here. She does, um, among other fibers, she does a really beautiful BFL, a blue face Lester. So instead of the kind of ever present Merino, which is a beautiful fiber, and there's a reason we have lots and lots of it here. Um, the BFL is a little bit different. It takes the color a little bit differently. It's got some more depth to it, a little bit more wooliness. And I love it so, so, so much. That was, um, um, what I was wearing and then we, <laughs> I changed my sweater, you guys, before we started this, because I was like, well, if I'm going to show my project, I can't be wearing the same yarn, but I, I have a, a, she did, this is a fingering weight and she has a DK weight as well that we carry. Um, and I love, love, love this yarn. And I've wanted to do like an all over color work sweater in it for ages. It is super wash, which is great because it's a little easier to take care of, but it, because it's BFL, it's still got some toothiness. So it still, uh, grabs on really, really, really well um, to itself and holds for color work. And I'm having a really, really good time. This is like, me for me, meditative knitting to have just the kind of, it holds my attention and then I can just sit here and just do this for hours. I'm loving it. it. So that's North absolutely Dale. beautiful. I cannot <laughs> believe the way that that is at working in that color work. It's beautiful. It um, took me yeah. forever to choose the colors. So choosing <laughs> Choosing colors for a color work project is really, 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 really difficult. And it's part of why we exist. Like part of why 
we don't just all buy yarn online. Like anyone who's ever bought yarn online knows this. Like the, the person has taken a photo of the yarn and then uploaded it and then probably touched it up and edited it a little bit, put it on their website. And then you are looking at it on your end. So there's a bunch of screens and a bunch of processes between the yarn getting to you that like, it's so hard to know really what color you're looking at. Um, and anyone who's ever bought yarn online is knows that when it comes, you're always just a tiny little bit surprised at the color and it's the same here. So throughout the pandemic, we've had um, this really interesting challenge where we're trying to find like color work sweaters for people. So I spent, I think like on Sunday, like an hour and a half, just taking pictures of different potential five color combos for a sweater for a customer and I just sent her all these photos and she'd be like okay I like this one and this one and this one but can you do this and we've done it over zoom but it doesn't work as well because it's really hard to get mm. accurate colors on a video I can't control them the way I can in a photograph but like yeah for some reason choosing colors for myself was even harder <laughs> so I I put together something like 12 combinations and put them on our Instagram and made everybody help me choose and then I ended up choosing a combination that I hadn't even offered <laughs> my friend was like you lied to us <laughs> but but I am really really happy with it and the reason it works is because there's a background cut like the the dark red is a background color and then the green and the yellow are kind of the same quality so they're both brighter and lighter than the dark red it seems really obvious to say it now but like if one of these two colors the the yellow or the green was too close to the red you wouldn't see the design um and I have learned that the hard way more than once yeah I've never thought of how much extra work uh you need to do to help people choose colors um yeah. from your store uh but that's really fascinating that you kind of offer that um as part of the whole yarn buying experience it's really really lovely um I absolutely love that idea I need to I need to make that happen next time I buy yarn <laughs> um so what is new and exciting in your yarn wonderland these days will you take us on a little tour Sure, I will. You will have to forgive me because the store is a giant mess. Part of the thing with lockdown and like a proper lockdown where people can't come inside is it takes no time for this place to represent the inside of my brain, which is also a mess. <laughs> Um, it's, it's very, you know, colorful and exciting and productive, but, but also like a bit of a disaster. So we're like storing a lot of our yarn upstairs as well. I'm just going to flip the camera around. Um, and I won't block that with my hand, um, but we'll just start over here. This is our, we have a front front door like that that looks out onto the intersection. So you can see the rest of Kensington Market, which is that way. Um, and then over here is much of our cotton yarn. And then it starts with the super bulky. It goes backwards through all the weight of the yarn. Hello. Um, <laughs> so here we're getting into the kind of Aran weights and then there's worsted weights. We've got Emily Gillies here. We need to actually order more yarn from her. We're running a little bit low. Um, Emily Gillies is a local Toronto designer, a dyer, excuse me, who's like really blowing up lately. She's doing incredible stuff and we were the first ones to carry her. So we need some more. That's the worsted weight there. This stuff here is a boucle yarn that I was incredibly excited to get. I'm actually wearing it. I'll flip the camera around after. Um, this is from Julie Asselin in uh, the south end of Quebec and it's an alpaca and a highland wool combo. It's boucle, it's so soft. And I actually can't usually wear alpaca close to my skin, but I have no problem with this stuff for whatever reason. It makes an amazing texture here. We'll just quickly do this. And that's the sweater you're wearing right now. Yeah, yeah, like Which that. Which pattern is that? This is a pattern, oh, super flattering. <laughs> it's a pattern from Espace Tricot and I am blanking on the name, but I'll get it to you after and you can, uh, tape it Beautiful. up into the, um, but it's, it's a, it's a Montreal shop that did a design for this. And I'm just blanking on the name, but I will get it to you. Um, but I, I love, love, love this yarn. I have a lot of plans to do some really cool, um, color work as well, because it, the texture of the yarn, you still see the color work, but it's fuzzy in and of itself. It's very, very cool. Oh, There's the so DK fun. Georgian Bay. I was talking about old Noro standard giant pile of stuff. <laughs> Um, there's my desk notions, and then we're getting into the thinner stuff. See, we're storing our recycling inside right now. <laughs> uh, there you go. And then there's the Julie Aslan Lizu DK, some more. 
stuff there, some self-striping sock yarn, and then some lace weight. And then this is kind of the piece de resistance. Sorry, I'm trying not to go too fast, but I also don't want to trip. <laughs> this is the <laughs> wall there of sock yarn and lace weight yarn in the mostly hand dyed category there. So there's a ton of it. We've got Trailhead, there's Juniper Moon's Harriet Fine up there. There's three different yarns there from Trailhead. That's the Emily Gillies Sport. Lichen and Lace, Riverside Studios. More Lichen and Lace, that's the mohair there. These cabinets, I'm actually super proud of these. This is, uh, we're in, actually I should have explained this. We're in a temporary location right now. So uh, usually we would be across okay. the street over that way in a much, much, much bigger shop. But at the beginning of the pandemic, an unrelated, we needed to move. And I knew this was coming up for a long time because our building sold. They're going to put a second story on. There's a ton of construction that needs to be done. And of course, that's taking way, way longer than it was meant to. Um, and uh, so we'll be able to get back in there eventually. I was sort of hoping for this fall, but now we don't know. But so in the meantime, we're in this really tiny space. Um, and so we're doing our best to kind of manage with about half the space we need. Um, and we're doing okay. It helps that we haven't been able to really have very many people inside. But one of the things I came up with when we uh, moved here was these needle cabinets. So these are how we're storing oh, our wow. circular needles now. I can cram so many, I have two of these. And so those are the metal ones and then the wood ones are over there. And then there's a little bit more yarn. Oh, this is fun. Emily Gillies, who I mentioned before, the uh, Toronto dyer did this uh gradient set for us Let's see if i can get the lighting a little better based on our logo colors so it goes kind of dark orange through to teal like that and she did that just for us it's a gradient set of sport weight merino oh my goodness that is <laughs> so gorgeous yeah that's fun that's like a fun just totally unique to us thing that we have and then we're back to the front there's everybody's orders there to be picked up and i'll go back to my seat Beautiful. Sorry, I hope I didn't make everybody too seasick. My dad asked for a tour the other day and I, he, he was like, you need to slow down and move slower. <laughs> well, that's, that's the challenge these days. I did not know that connection between um, the lichen and lace dyer and yeah. let us knit. And let us knit. Yeah, her name is Megan and she's very, very talented. <laughs> yeah, she's doing a really wonderful job out in uh, New Brunswick now. Well, that is incredible. It has been so nice to get to know you a little bit and get to know your store. A oh, it's my bit pleasure. Better. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's so great to find uh, a little bit more about the people keeping us going during the, the pandemic with all of our knitting and crocheting and other fiber arts. Um, so I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Well, it was my pleasure. You guys are keeping me going. That is no, no exaggeration. Anytime I see an order come through on my phone, it makes me feel like I, I did something today. I accomplished something, which honestly is, is uh, not, not always an easy feeling to come by these days. So oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> well, I hope you have a great afternoon and that mm -hmm. uh, all the orders get picked up and that you're busy throughout the rest of this lockdown. And afterwards, we finally get to meet in person someday. <laughs> oh, I look forward to it so much. Okay, thank you so much, Amelia. Thank you. We'll Bye. see you soon. And that was my first interview for Frank and Frog Fiber Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I really had a great time with Amelia, and I'm so excited for you to see uh, the other interviews I'm going to do as well. So one shout out at the end of this video. There is a really amazing initiative going on right now um, on Instagram and across uh, different uh, indie dyer stores in Ontario. And the initiative is called Be a Freaking Unicorn. So this means uh, that if you purchase unicorn uh, flavored yarn that it's a flavor <laughs> from any of the participating dyers you can you can follow uh at be a freaking unicorn on instagram and you'll get some updates and the website is there but when you purchase fiber from any of these indie dyers any of the uh unicorn themed fiber um donations are given to 2s lgb lgbtq plus um, organizations. So 
that is such a beautiful initiative um and i bought some yarn from the loving path and so i'm gonna link uh to that in the description i am so excited it is a beautiful uh skein of sock yarn and then an accent color for the toes heels and cuffs if i want to very excited about that so go uh it goes from may 1st and it ends on may 24th so you can go there get some beautiful uh special unicorn yarn and uh support a great cause so with that i will say goodbye for this week and once again thank you for joining me here on frank and frog fiber podcast and see you in two weeks friends Scream and shout, yarn, oh I start to salivate, yarn. At first there is nothing but a lone skein of yarn, and a fear grips your heart about what you'll make. Why wind the fiber, I cast on it a sweater, and the that's all I got. Sorry, I couldn't think of any more lyrics. What a feeling means believing. You know what I'm saying? Yarn.